Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you what to pick up in Rivals of Ixlan. Now, we are in the pre-release stage, meaning cards will be the most expensive they have ever been for the majority of these cards. Maybe there's a few of them that will go down a tiny bit, and maybe there's one or two that will go up a considerable amount, like the Scarab God. But even then, if something doubles, you're only going to get, assuming buy list is 50%, which is generous for many locations, you break even if a card doubles. So let's talk about the Mythics. I do not like any of them. I think all of them are not are overpriced. If I had to pick one, I would probably pick the... Hootly Radiant Champion, and she really needs a deck though. Like, she would need the perfect deck, but the rest of these are kind of just met to me. I don't see I, I don't see them being very impactful for the modern or legacy scenes. They are generally weaker than cards I have. I knew that we were going into a weak block, it was pretty obvious, but this is pretty bad in terms of power level now that's not to say the set itself is not going to be fun or standard is not going to be fun standard is going to be a ton of fun however these cards should not hold value long term because they're not they're not strong enough all right let's look at the rares we have blood sun that is the one rare you want to be opening what is my opinions on Blood Sun? Obviously, people are going to compare it to cards that are also worth over $10. I think it's good. Obviously, it's overpriced right now, but it's one of the things like anointed processions that like you knew was good, and now it's more expensive than it used to be. I could see it going up in price. The rest of it, I mean, Storm Devolt is kind of interesting in my opinion. That's an interesting one. Cave of Eternity, any of these flip cards, especially in foil, kind of piqued my interest. But for the most part, there's no not much value here. I will tell you two cards I would be interested in getting a few hundred copies of. And But anyway, let's talk about the rares first. I'm not a fan of most of them. I think that long-term wise, like, you have Captain's Hook, Brass's Bounty, Admiral's Order, it's kind of an interesting one, Induced Amnesia, Slaughter the Strong is steady at two. Yeah, these are not, these are bulk cards. After rotation, these will be the cards that no one wants, that your that stores will pay you 10 cents store credit. And you don't want to be holding on to these long term. So if you can trade them away. Typically at pre-release, if you can trade any cards away, trade them away for anything else in standard would be fine. Anything in modern would be great because they're only going to drop in price. So let's take a look at the second half. You have Dial Fleet Daredevil. That's a really good one. I don't think it's going to hold $7 after rotation. It'll be like a 50 cent card. Primal Storm. That's an interesting one. I mean, the only cards of any interest are tribal cards and they're not tribal dinosaur i'm talking about and not tribal pirates they're the established tribes of merfolks and vampires vampires has, have traditionally done very well i like them casual players like them and the same with merfolks merfolks has been semi-competitive recently but it generally reminds me of more casual players so these are two tribes that have already been established. The pirate trap tribe as well as the dinosaur tribe are not established and therefore will not hold as much casual appeal because it may be many, many moons before we get another pirate set or dinosaur set. But I can guarantee you we will get another vampire set. <laughs> Vampires will be in core set. And so will Merfolk. Since the very beginning of this game, we had our vampire scenes and we had our, hmm, what was that, Mer oh, obviously Merfolk of the Trial Perdent, Peril, no, yeah, Trial Peril, and Lord of Atlantis, and other Merfolks have been around forever, as has vampires. So I don't expect any of these tribes to go away. Therefore, 
the only cards worth hoarding or obtaining many copies of our Merfolk Mistbinder, which it lists is at $1.50 right now. It's not the best. That's not right. And Legion Lieutenant, which is the Vampire Tribal Lord. The Silver Gill Adept is interesting, but again, I'm not expecting these to hold price, especially as more product gets open. I'm expecting this to be like 25 cents or 50 cents. If either Merfolk Mistbinder or Legion Lieutenant drops to 50 cents or more, which they should, logically they will, I will buy a ton of them. Because this is the type of card that a casual player needs four of. They definitely want four of them, which makes selling them easier. And the foil should also be interesting. There's currently no foil prices on them, but that's where I would initially buy. I would initially buy the foils of those two cards. Silver Guild's a reprint, so I'm not as interested, but it's still not a bad card. But where I would put money is I wouldn't put money in any of the Mythics. I would not put money in any of the Rares. I'm not hopeful that they will go up in price. I would put money on the foil copies of Merfolk, Mistbinder, and Legion Lieutenant after a month after pre-release. And that is my plan. My plan is to buy lots and lots of them. I do like the artwork. I think the artwork is very good, so it does have that like i don't buy anything that i'm not happy to hold copies of even if it goes down to no money so i will talk about the miss binder first great art of artwork very beautiful it is a merfolk and that is really important that is very important and other merfolks you control get plus one plus one so it is a merfolk lord it weakness it's in green so it's you can't be blue can't be Lord of Atlantis double blue. And the second weakness is it doesn't give Island Walk or that additional ability. So it's just a, it is a worst version of the traditional Lords, if you will, and the Merfolks. But that being said, any Lord is a good Lord and a Lord at Uncommon is a very good Lord for casual players. So casual players are not going to care. EDH players are not going to care. Tribal Merfolk players are not going to care as much unless they're super competitive. Merfolks in general are not something I would say, hmm, this is a very competitive tribe. No, I think people just want to have fun with the game uh, if they play the deck. So I like it. I really do like it. I think it does have some upside. Uh, upside being that it is a shaman and it is two colors. I know those two colors might matter for something like Convoke or something like that, right? So I like it. I would buy, you know, I would be happy with 400, 500 copies of this in non-foil and maybe 100 copies in foil. It depends on the price point. I will be looking to pick these up and I'm not going to look trade. I don't trade as much anymore, but I will be looking to buy them and buy them a lot because I think that these are the cards that will hold value long term. Next, Legion Lieutenant. It is a vampire knight. It's also two colors. And it gives other vampires you control plus one plus one as well as being a two two just like the Miss Folk. These cards are going to drop a lot. And what I know about vampire people is as soon as a new vampire set comes out, boom, all those Olivia Vodarins and all all those vampires now go up a tiny bit in price. And I like it. I like it because I guarantee you we will see a new vampire set and a new merfolk set by the end of the year i mean 2018 there'll be another merfolk and vampire set there will be vampires and they will be good and there'll be merfolks and they'll be good just in magic's history they've always had these two tribes uh, as well as goblins and humans i guess was kind of a tribe in the beginning jinns the jinns were a tribe not really but they were your end game Dragons, you always have your dragons and your angels and your demons. I wish they would redo demons. I think demons are kind of bad now, but back in the day, Lord of the Pit was the best card. <laughs> you couldn't beat it. It was like the biggest card. So I like these two cards. I like them a lot. I think that's where I would say the growth will be. The growth in this set is not in the rares or mythics. It's in these two uncommons. Because power level, these two uncommons are very good. And they affect each other. So if you have two of them out in play, they give each other one plus one plus one. If you have 
more of them in play and more lords, you're good to go. I mean, vampires are very... These are the two tribes that get out creatures very fast. And they want to pump them. And having lords, every lord in these two tribes has been very good. So having lords at uncommon is a buy opportunity in my opinion. I don't know, it's kind of a strange buy because it is an uncommon and it will be a card under 50 cents at some point in time. But I would not be afraid to move them. I honestly would, some cards I, I'm afraid of buying because I don't know how I would move it. Like if I bought Mo or Lion's Eye Diamond or something like that, like it's hard to move because conditioning is so important as well as the buyer's normally picky, you're subs you are more. So if you were selling a Lion's Eye Diamond, you maybe have a one or 2% chance of the uh, buyer scamming you, like either with, oh, you sent me a fake one. There's many ways, maybe it's 5% now because people have got a lot better at doing scams. But no one's gonna scam you in this, right? It's like, okay, I'm gonna scam you on a card that's worth a dollar a piece, $4. No, that's not gonna happen. So I like it because it will sell in play sets, it will trade in play sets, and it will trade to people who are willing to give more value than they should, aka casual players, and will also have the additional benefit of those players are not likely to scam you as if you sold them an underground C and the conditioning was a little off or maybe his con I mean, there's so many things that can go wrong with selling a $500 magic card that does not go wrong with selling $4 magic cards in play sets. So $1 magic cards times four. That's my personal experience and that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. I would rather sell in volume than sell higher chase items. Anyway, that is it. Bye guys.